Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Pink Mike Legal Confessions. I'm Stephanie Garcistone, owner of Garces Law Firm here in Palatine, helping you prepare for the unexpected and also helping families and parents um, and guardians prepare for their legacy and to protect their assets over time. So today we are going to be talking about an interesting topic and kind of not so exciting as some of the other ones, but it's about taxes. And a lot of people um, have an idea as to what um, advantages there are for estate planning and taxes. But one of the main benefits of estate planning in general is the tax advantages that come with um, having your assets protected, um, specifically um, when it comes to property or um, maybe financial assets that you have. A lot of times there is ways to uh, circumvent the taxes that would come and sort of either reduce or limit them um, or even eliminate them, pass them on to um, to another generation. So one of the things that we are going to cover today is that. And all parties um, involved with estate planning have to follow IRS guidelines, of course. So in today's episode, I'm going to talk a lot about that. Um, I think one of the things is that people always think um, there's two things that are for certain, death and taxes. We know this. Um, but proper estate planning does take a lot of time and planning. And so um, a lot of things that are included in estate planning that tends to be something of interest is transferring your properties upon your death. And so a lot of people think, okay, if I have um, my property in my name and um, in my spouse's name, that'll be enough. And unfortunately, there is um, some things that you do need to do to take an extra step. So um, in Texas, of course, is something that your family has to deal with sometimes if you don't have an estate plan um, at all. So uh, there is ways to reduce them and to transfer property, uh, physical property, real estate property, financial assets, and things of value. So there are rules to be aware of um, when it comes to estate planning, um, especially to avoid headaches when it comes to any tax penalties or any issues. And so working with an estate planning attorney that's experienced and understands this can really explain it to you um, very clearly is um, the best way to navigate some of these issues. And so today I'm going to break down three areas um, to be aware of when it comes to how the IRS views transfer of property, assets, and financial wealth. Um, oddly enough, I think the if you look go on the IRS's website, they actually have their own terminology for what uh, the definition of a trust is. And so their textbook answer is basically saying a trust is a relationship in which one person holds title to property subject to an obligation to keep or use the property for the benefit of another. And so uh, keep in mind, trusts are a great way to protect your assets. Now, every state has different laws. So it's important for you to know that who we are working with is licensed in your state and actually understands what you're actually doing um, with your assets. But the point is, is that the IRS is always going to want to know to an extent uh, for tax purposes, if there's a trust in place or if there's not a trust in place. And so when it comes to uh, the first topic we're gonna cover today is physical property. So real estate um, assets that are, are in your name, um, how do beneficiaries, um, you know, get that property and how do they have to um, kind of pay taxes or avoid taxes, that sort of thing. Um, when it comes to the second option, or excuse me, the second uh, category we're going to cover, we're going to cover financial investments, cash and life insurance. So do beneficiaries need to declare this as income and report this to the IRS? Um, that's a really good question. So uh, the other thing we're going to cover is the benefits of a trust. This is um, my personal favorite topic because it talks about what the trust actually does. And so I always say the trust has so much power. And so a lot of people think um, their estate plan with a will maybe is enough, but it really depends on your situation. You know, sometimes it could be enough and sometimes you need to trust. But the trust is actually just a little bit more for your things. And so it really depends on um, your specific, specific circumstance. But how does the IRS view a trust is really important to note. Um, what do we care to know about trust and how do they reassign property, especially when it comes to your business um, or even commercial property, um, real estate property, your, your residential home? I mean, there's so many things. I always say the list goes on when it comes to, um, to trusts and really um, how to avoid some of the tax implications that come from that. So um, I want to just mention, too, uh, what we're talking about today is just 
in a general in a general statement. So everyone's um, situation is different. And especially when someone is passed, um, there are other things that come into play. You know, estate tax is one of them. Um, there's just a lot of things that come up. And so we're going to talk about it very generally. Lastly, please always remember that when we talk about estate planning and some of the things that we're doing for our clients or the attorney that you've hired hopefully knows that our role is really to guide you and to make sure that we've um, really covered everything that you have you have wishes to, to leave for your family, um, you want to protect your assets. And so I like to always remind my clients where well, we're here for you and your families long after just creating your estate plan. So we do help families not just create their estate plan to protect the, the transfer of wealth and assets um, that they've basically generated or built over time. Sometimes we have people that start with one home, have another one, have another one, have another one. And the next thing you know, they have a portfolio of about 19, 20 properties. And so uh, we are here to help you make sure you actually, you actually know how to buy the property to protect your asset from the beginning, not just later. Um, we also establish your trust. We review your trust. Um, if there's any corresponding will uh, that's in place, we try to preserve your legacy through putting everything in your estate plan, whether it's your living trust and will, um, to really just you know cover some unexpected scenarios, but also making sure that the people that you leave in charge are the ones that you um, are directing to, to do certain things in your estate plan. And so uh, keep in mind, there is never a uh, right time to do this. A lot of people will put this in their to-do list. I have done many presentations um, in person, um, which obviously if you follow us on, on social media, you'll see when I have those. But whenever I have this in person, I usually always uh, tell individuals that they really should consider having a will, having an estate plan, um, even the most basic one, no matter what you have in assets, no matter what you have in the bank, um, whether you have children or no children, because I think um, planning for unexpected scenarios is really important. Also, uh, one of the things that we do is we ensure the documents you have are compliant with Illinois law, um, or perhaps if you have something from another state, we make sure it's compliant, that there isn't anything missing that would actually uh, invalidate what the document is, or perhaps, um, you know, doesn't create more confusion with what you've, you know, have in place as opposed to what's happening now. And um, a lot of times we have people that unfortunately have uh, lost their spouse or have lost um, a child or something has happened that is basically life altering that would require you to update those documents. So we always make sure to double check that, um, you know, for us to review is not, uh, not a big job for us. We just make sure that you have something that's compliant uh, with state rules, but also with um, the IRS to make sure that we've, you know, stipulated just certain things in there so that you can avoid um, any tax issues. And we also make sure that things are properly notarized. I mean, I can't tell you how many times um, we have estate plans that we see that were either created on their own online, uh, which I never recommend, which is what we always talk about on their show. But also um, sometimes there's uh, plans that perhaps don't also encompass um, some of the rules that you need for the particular state, especially Illinois. You need, um, you know, certain requirements, whether it's notarization and or witnesses to make sure it's valid. Otherwise, you know, what's the point of having something that won't work? That's not good. <laughs> so that's something we always cover. Um, we also help a lot of individuals during like emergency situations. And so we do have a number of people that will call us whether uh, mom or dad is ill um, or a family member is not doing well and we need to sort of expedite having an estate plan um, done. We call these, unfortunately, I hate the word, but a lot of people will call it deathbed signings. So not fun to talk about, but um, perhaps someone's just ill. And so you just want to get something in order Order. Um, that is something we offer and we do it pretty fast. So assuming that um, that is something you need, we are able to help. Just do not wait is my biggest advice so that you can make sure everything is ready to go. Um, the other thing too is, you know, we do guide your uh, estate plan and we guide you as best as, as possible when it comes to picking out guardians, uh, picking out trustees for uh, the administration or of your estates in the event that you've passed or become incapacitated. So we do help kind of maneuver and pick who are the best people to do this. Uh, keep in mind too, um, a lot of people have uh, big families, so they don't know who to pick or they're thinking, you know, um, is one more person better suited to do this than the other? And so we help you with that and we guide you to try to make sure that you have the right person um, in charge 
for your affairs. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, I want to also recap really quickly for those of you that are just joining me. I'm attorney Stephanie Garces Donay here at Garces Law Firm, my law firm in Palatine, where we help you prepare for the unexpected. We also help individuals, families, and parents create legacy plans, protecting their future and their financial future. And you know, you can always watch our Facebook videos if you missed what we talked about the previous week. Uh, but it is a really great way for us to educate um, our potential clients and our community to make sure everyone really has things in place in the event of, of the inevitable. Um, so like I was telling you to, earlier today, the topic that I'm covering is our beneficiaries inheritance text. Well, we always welcome you to join us here Tuesdays at one o'clock to cover Pink Mike Leo Confession topics with us. We cover a lot of stuff for parents, guardians, um, and I would think almost all our viewers really do have something on their to-do list. Um, I know a lot of people that have been calling me recently that have seen our videos usually have a to-do list, whether it's for them or their parents or their grandparents, right? There is somebody in your family tree that is in need of an estate plan, very likely. So uh, be sure to share these videos with them so that they can take a look at this. Now, uh, I know many of you have questions, so I want to make sure to tackle them before I wrap up everything today. So one of the questions I, I get in, in this arena is, uh, what happens to assets if I die without a will? Now, we harp on this all the time because um, when you die without a will, you basically have left no direction for your family. Uh, there is no way to name who you actually want to give your assets to because there's nothing left to um, to say. There was nothing left of a plan. There's no direction given to your family. And so your assets really depending on the situation, um, a lot of times there is no owner to them. There is no automatic beneficiary. Now I know what you're thinking. A lot of times the law does say there are heirs, you know, next of kin that would be entitled to things. Yes, that is true. However, um, transferring those assets is what ends you up in probate. And so um, when you don't have an estate plan, when you don't have a will, you really end up um, in a position where you basically have to have any family member that's living, any heir uh, that would want to get access to the assets, they have to open up an estate. Um, and they do that by going to probate court, um, which can be quite costly. And quite honestly, it's never really a uh, straight line. A lot of it requires a lot of uh, paperwork, a lot of uh, checking with heirs. We have to make sure too, like we don't know if the family members um, are around and how many kids are there and how many, uh, is is there anyone that's living or not living? You know, the family trees are so um, interesting. And that's one of the reasons I really like this area. But at the same time, we do help with individuals who are trying to get access to that. But really what happens is you end up in probate for the most part. Um, you definitely don't want to uh, be in that position because I think it cre creates a lot of stress and a lot of um, confusion as to what do you do. But um, typically that's where you, you end up. I would say as a, as a general matter. Um, the other thing too is how long does it take to transfer assets into a trust? Now, this is such a great question because um, it depends how you set it up. So if we're saying, you know, the immediate things that we have to move, we can move those right away, assuming that we can do it. Um, so what I mean by that is, for example, your home is the biggest example. A lot of people have a home and it's in their name. But if it's in your name, uh, that is unfortunately not enough for um, the world of estate planning to protect the asset. And so we have to transfer the home, uh, which is one of the things we offer our clients um, in-house because we were able to do it, move the house into the trust. Um, why? Because that is basically putting it into the trust while you're living. And that is like one of the biggest things that you can do and the most beneficial things you can do with your uh, properties. Now, keep in mind, if you have multiple properties, um, maybe some that you own and some that you rent, we may advise you to do um, something a little bit different um, when it comes to the estate plan and the trust. But there are so many ways for us to help you and um, transferring the assets could be done right away if it's something like real estate. Um, now, keep in mind, there's certain assets that you don't want to transfer right away. You know, you may not want to transfer your um, IRA, for example, or if you have a, a retirement account, because transferring it out of that account into a trust while you're living actually does have tax implications. You could be penalized for moving that early. So uh, those are things that you certainly want to avoid. But those are things that um, you really want to consult with an attorney as to how long it takes and what transfers do need to happen to the trust. 
That is a great question though, because there's so many answers to it, depending on what we're discussing, what asset it is. The other question that I get a lot is, is, is a trust a business entity? Uh, now, this is a good question because I think uh, we've actually worked with a lot of individuals that have um, properties that are rentals, um, properties that are a business entity, um, or they're owned by a business entity, I should say. And so uh, typically a trust is not a business entity. A business entity is something like an LLC, um, a corporation, something where you've uh, formalized that through the Secretary of State, and it's an entity for purposes of taxes. Um, and no, the trust is actually completely private. It's not a business entity um, as the definition of business entity. Now, a lot of times people will think um, that the entity for a trust is similar or synonymous to an LLC or some sort of business entity. And it's really not. It's really uh, apples and oranges. Keep in mind, for example, like business entities are you're you're conducting business under them. You're, um, you know, you have a, a business perhaps that you run through your business entity. Uh, for example, um, if you think about like, you know, a, a company that does business um, rentals out of an LLC, that is a business entity. It's like, you know, constantly being used for business purposes. Whereas an estate plan is just a estate plan and it's actually private. The trust is completely private. Nobody gets to see it. It's not public record and it's totally yours and you can use it right away. Um, but it is not a business entity. So it is a good, good question to ask. Um, now, the big question that we get all the time is what other tax advantages does estate planning uh, protect now um, or provide, I should say, does both. But one of the things that when we think about taxes as a whole, I mean, having a trust is certainly a way to reduce taxes. And depending on the type of trust it is, there's so many um, answers to that question. But um, estate tax is typically a federal law. It dictates um, what an estate is worth. And so, um, Usually there's exemptions up to a certain amount, um, depending on the value of, of what you have. Um, so typically um, there is a threshold in the millions um, with regards to an estate. And so uh, to, for, I think I want to say when we think about um, the threshold, right, um, it depends on uh, how much you have. And so the IRS does care um, as far as how much you're worth when you pass away, because uh, if you're if you're worth over a certain amount, um, then you do get taxed um, a little bit differently than someone that's worth a little bit less. And so having a trust can really help reduce taxes um, in many ways. It can generally um, make sure that what's protected by your trust isn't um, taxed in the same way as if you didn't have a trust. And so um, there are so many diff different types of trusts that exist that can help you accomplish various estate planning objectives when it comes to tax planning. Um, but Basically, um, you know, there are some liabilities, too, that come from it. Uh, there's there's a gift tax, um, which basically uh, that's a whole different type of tax that's different than what's well, kind of it's in the estate tax world, but it's a little bit different. Um, there are some dilemmas that come up um, when it comes to taxes if you are are. Um, you know, getting certain money or giving certain money, or there's something left outside the trust. And so there's so many trusts that um, can kind of help with tax planning. And so we usually, um, when we think about taxes, it really depends on what the person is worth. And so having an idea and a trusted professional that can help you guide you in that, um, not just an attorney, but also, you know, a lot of accountants are very, very um, well known to help with sort of formulating the plans. So a lot of times we speak with them about what your goals are, um, if that's something that is relevant to your scenario. But there are a lot of tax advantages in that, um, you know, you can have a trust and even make, um, you know, certain things owned by the trust um, and set it up between you and your spouse, for example, where you're avoiding being taxed um, in a certain way as if you didn't have it. So there's always incentives to um, have a trust because there are so many tax advantages. Um, so there's something to keep in mind. There's also, um, I was going to say, there's an also, also another way that you can um, help avoid, you know, significant taxes, um, especially with making like charitable donations is really popular. So uh, a lot of 
a lot of times people bypass uh, certain taxes, I should say, to transfer um, things to you know, a charity, for example, through a trust. And so uh, there are some ways to get some tax um, incentives that way too. But uh, like I said, um, having your trust and estate plan really can help with taxes. And there's just so much to it that it really is hard to encompass in one, one um, Facebook Live. But I do think that there is never a reason not to have it if you're trying to avoid tax um, implications. And um, the other question that we get a lot is how do you charge for an estate plan? Um, now, when we charge for consultations, uh, typically it really depends on your scenario. So a lot of times um, we've charged a hundred dollars initially, and a lot of times we'll help that go towards your final uh, bill. Um, if it's something that we don't feel like we need to charge, then we don't, but we do have um, some leeway and discretion to do that. So depending on your scenario, but a lot of times too, I mean, you do you want to make sure that whoever you're going with does have an idea um, as to, you know, your full estate plan. Um, anyone can create, um, you know, their online estate plan and anyone can go to um, an attorney that says, oh, I'm going to just create your will. But if we're not considering the full assets and uh, some of the things you have and even just what you're worth right now um, or at the time you've passed, it could really lead to some tax issues. And so a lot of times people do create trusts because they know that there's ways to defer to defer taxes and to um, avoid certain taxes being imposed um, as opposed to not having anything at all. So just something to keep in mind. Now, where do you contact me if you have any questions? Well, my uh, Obviously, our law firm uh, website is on the screen, but if you wanted to make a consultation, you can always text us or call us at the number below because here we are actually always answering um, potential clients that have um, questions about how do we set up a consultation? Um, what do we go through? What do you prepare beforehand? We will help you with all that. And it is our pleasure to be able to even assist you or if you want to even, um, you know, have a family member that wants to come our way, we're happy, happy to service you. Uh, but I do want to thank you so much for watching today. Like I said, taxes and death are two certain things, and they're very, very complex, at least when it comes to the tax world. So having an estate plan um, that really secures your financial future is the way to go. So thank you to the viewers for watching me today. I really appreciate all your questions and insights um, and feedback, as always, that I get. So like I always say, daily life can be very, very hectic. And and we know that with what's going on in the world, it's really easy to be distracted and to put off your estate plan. Um, so it's really, really important to set up a consultation. Um, try to do it as soon as possible. Don't wait till something happens or till someone gets sick. And um, it is a really, really a very responsible thing to do. Um, if you can try to take care of your family, be proactive because if there's one thing you you know can do is you have control over over the way that you react to certain things and so right now uh, with everything going on with our economy and with our our, our country uh, we want to make sure that everyone's empowered to at least put something together to protect your family in the inevitable so i invite you to join me here next week on tuesday at one o'clock for pink my blue confessions and please share the recordings with your family and friends to see if they'd be interested in watching us so thank you. Thank you so much for everything today. And I will talk to you soon. Take care, everyone.